Hey guys, George here, and I'm in the mood to record a video. And I, so I've been trolling the uh, Steam forums, looking for things that people are interested in seeing videos about. Um, so I'm in the ship editor right now, and what I'm going to talk about is how power works. If you're trying to design a ship to optimize the power flowiness of your design, such that your engines or your thrusters or your guns or whatever you have gets the right amount of power, um, it may be interesting to you to know exactly how power is generated, how it moves through the conduits, how it's stored in capacitors, and how it eventually gets to your modules and how they use it. Um, so uh, I'm going to turn on the power overlay here because the basic system for power um, follows a simple rule. There's essentially three categories of things. Um, there are in blue power generators. These are reactors. In the future they may be something other than reactors. You might have solar panels that would fit into our framework the same way reactors fit in. Um, the point is that you have things which are a source of power. Those are given special privilege in the power system. Um, power comes from them and flows to other things, which means power can't go across them, can't go into them. They're a source. Uh, in yellow you have uh, things which can move power. Um, so capacitors and conduits are essentially the same thing in that regard. A conduit has a finite amount of bandwidth, which it can transfer uh, six energy in one update. I'll talk about updates in a second. Um, or 30 energy per second. It's because there's five updates per second. Anyways. Uh, and then in green, finally, we have power users. And in this overlay, um, radiators, they're green, but they're kind of not exactly a power user. They get, this overlay shows them as green because for the purpose of um, placing uh, a radiator, uh, it makes sense to show them as green versus red uh, because for the purpose of connecting them, they pretty much work the same as modules power can't go through them, they're either connected or they're not, so on and so forth. Um, but let's talk about how power gets updated and the uh, cycles. The, essentially the entire ship goes through a number of cycles uh, with regards to power, and so power has a couple phases. Um, it does it five times a second, so anything, any stat that is on a conduit, any stat that's on a reactor, any stat that's on a module in terms of how much energy is used, technically under the hood, uh, it relates to just a simple number of, you know, how much does this use per tick, and then we just assume five ticks per second, and so that's how you get 30 transferred per second, is because it can handle six in one tick. So what does that six mean? Well, for a conduit, that means that six energy can flow through it in one update. Um, and that's important because of how power gets used, and power gets used in phases. So the first phase uh, for power updating is uh, you have modules, the green here, which use power. And every single module that uses power has internal to itself, it knows how much power it has, it knows how much power it wants, and when it's that module's turn to use power, it is allowed to go searching, and it does a searching algorithm to search along all of the yellow tracks to see if it can find power. So taking as an example um, this engine right here, if it was really low on power, what it would do is it would start at either connection here and it would go out uh, until it found either a capacitor that had power, and it would once it had found it, it would then move that power back to itself. And using all along here, using the bandwidth of those conduits as it moves that power. Uh, so that now that uh, engine has gotten its energy, that bandwidth is used on there. So that say the next module, this guy, comes along and he also wants to get power. When he comes out, uh, when he checks this conduit and goes along, maybe he finds that this capacitor is empty and needs to keep searching. When he gets to this part of the path, 
what he'll find is that this conduit has already been used, but maybe it's only been used... Um, maybe this... Uh, if this engine took six energy from that update, that conduit is fully used. What he'll find is that he's... It, He's blocked there, he can't get any power from that route, and he'll go and he'll try a different route. Maybe he'll get power directly from the reactor, maybe he'll get power from wherever it can be reached. Um, so you can see these engines, uh, because of the way this is set up, these engines will never be able to take power from this capacitor, for instance. They'll never be able to touch anything up here. Um, there's a very hard sort of uh, limit as to how far these things can reach based on how everything's wired up. Um, but because... but you're probably thinking in terms of the blocked conduit, because the conduit is has had its bandwidth used, that this engine gets sort of um, blocked. And that's not exactly fair to this engine. You don't want starvations of this engine. That's why the the next phase, if the phase, if the first phase is that it goes through the green modules one at a time and tries to take power, um, what the algorithm does is that it then shuffles what order they're in, so that every update a random module will be the first one to go. And actually, it's not random. It depends on how long it how desperate that module is for power and how long it's been since that module got power. So if this engine is using a lot more power than this engine is and it's been blocked in a cup for the last cycle, it will get priority in the next cycle and so on and so forth. And so what, what you'll notice is that telltale updating of power going to this one and then the next update it goes to that one and then it goes to this one again and it goes to that one and so on and so forth. Um, by designing your ship to make the paths into uh, things which are parallel, that can't block each other. Uh, you do improve the bandwidth, you improve the amount of power that can go to things, um, so that modules aren't starving each other for power. If they, if they have routes to capacitors and reactors that don't have uh, junctions like this, T-junctions, uh, then they'll never interfere with each other and you'll get nice smooth flow of power. Um, but sometimes uh, you have things like a life support that doesn't use much power, you don't really care. Um, so that's phase one. Phase one is green, the green things here, the modules that use power, go out looking for power, try to find it, and they bring it back to themselves while using up the bandwidth of the conduits. Phase two, rem it, phase two now uses in the same sort of system, uh, with all of the conduits having been used already by the modules, the reactors, it's their turn now. So phase two is the reactors phase, and what the reactors do in phase two is they sort of check to see how much energy has been taken from them by the modules in that phase. If a reactor has had too much energy taken from it, um, it's probably generated a whole lot of heat, and in terms of that cycle, it's done generating energy. It's not going to make any more, and it essentially just steps, it just takes a break for that phase, it doesn't do anything. But in many cases, like in the case with a reactor that's powering a gun or a shield generator, if you're not using, if you're not firing your guns and your shield generator isn't generating any shields, then probably the reactor didn't get any energy taken from it that cycle. So it goes and it calculates how much energy can I produce without generating any excess heat? How would, you know, it essentially tries to operate at its most efficient point um, in terms of heat creation. So it figures out mathematically wh however much power will give me the most power for the least heat is how much I generate this cycle. And it takes that power and it goes out through those same conduits looking for a place to put it. It tries to put it into capacitors essentially. Um, since we assume at this point that modules already have all the power they would want or can't be reached because the conduits have used all of their bandwidth, um, during phase two, essentially reactors try to fill up capacitors. So that's what phase two is. Um, so then uh, the final phase, I guess, would be that shuffling of the order of modules, but also uh, is heat. Um, since the reactors generate heat whenever they also generate energy, 
and it, mind you, the generation of energy is when modules pull energy out of a reactor in phase one, and in phase two when reactors just push power out to capacitors. Both of those actions generate heat. Um, if you have the modules pulling energy directly from the uh, reactors, it generates more heat, and the heat builds up in the reactors. So uh, during the last phase, uh, all of the radiators um, have a certain amount of heat that they can sort of destroy, and they go out along conduits looking for a reactor. And they'll, they'll hit any reactor that they can on their little network. And if they can find any heat to destroy, they just take it away from that reactor. So, uh, some, and the nice thing about um, radiators, they don't take any bandwidth. They can go anywhere the conduits go and find any reactor. So, so these radiators here can take heat from this reactor. They can go through this capacitor. They can go up and take heat from, oh, uh... Is it connected to this? I don't see a connection. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, look, all the way up here, it's connected to this uh, capacitor, so it can then come all the way back, and it, that way it could take heat from this. Um, it can't go through a reactor uh, in any way, but so long as it can somehow reach a connection to a reactor, a radiator will be able to destroy the heat that is on that reactor. Um, so that's the last phase, is the heat destroying phase. Uh, and after that phase, the sort of used bandwidth of every conduit is completely reset, and, condu and the entire thing starts over again. And the entire process happens five times a second, and capacitors, like I said, for the most part, they have they have bandwidth rates as well, but capacitors' bandwidth rates are pretty much equal to the amount that they can store. So while a conduit can move six per unit, uh, six per uh, update, if you look at a capacitor, it can hold 315, so it can move 315 per update. It's essentially, um, you're not going to have choke points with capacitors, you're usually going to have choke points just with conduits. Um, so when optimizing your builds, uh, parallel conduit paths uh, can be a lot better than like interconnected conduit paths uh, because it will attempt when transferring power to take sort of the shortest path and the shortest path is often a diagonal uh, which means that uh, it's very valuable to keep things not connected to each other in some situations uh, in other situations maybe you don't care and you just let power go everywhere um, but that's kind of, I think, a general overview of how power works, and hopefully clears up any misconceptions about power, and I hope that you guys have fun designing spaceships. Take it easy, and thanks for listening. And screw you guys, I'm out.